You're needed in human resources, please. Good job. Thanks. Yeah. Hey, you got some, huh? You got some stuff on your nose? Oh. <laughs> mm -hmm. So, have you seen him? No, it's my first day. Yeah, mine too. This may be the best day of my life. <laughs> I know. He just oozes kindness, you know? If he walked in here right now, I would totally turn into a snow puddle. They say that his eyes just radiate with love and, and candy, but mostly love. Sure, 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 sure. They say that he makes you feel like you're the only person in the room. Have you ever seen how the children's faces just light up when they see him? The hope that he spreads? I can't hardly contain myself right now. <laughs> you imagine being friends with him? <laughs> I know. <laughs> Sometimes there aren't enough words to express how amazing he is. We should celebrate him all year round. If it were up to me, we would. His love, his grace, coming to this earth to save us. Come on, guys. Let's go celebrate Jesus' birthday. Just FYI, I was, I was talking about Jesus the whole time. Oh, I was too. Mm -hmm. I 100% I was talking about Jesus. Same page, same yeah. page. <laughs> Worship your holy name. 
corazón lo hace Christmas is over and we are heading into the new year and 2020 is very soon to be in our rearview mirror and I know many of us are going yes so hopeful for 2021 that it'll be a different year a time for us as a country and as a as Christian based uh, organization to really make a difference in people's lives. And so this morning, I'm asking you one last time before the year end to please give to us in our endeavors to people like Seven Loaves Ministry in Middleburg, who I met Carly, who's the head of the organization there. She is just a wildfire. She is so great at getting in there and finding out what people's needs are. And she's tirelessly working for the poor and the needy of our community. We are so proud to be a part of their a team that are helping people. Uh, Tree of Life Ministries out of Percival and Leesburg area in Virginia, feeding the poor, taking care of the widows, putting coats on people who are cold, doing what Jesus wanted us to do, to show the love that we have and compassion for each other. So I'm asking you one last time, tax deduction, whatever it is that you, that you think it is, to fill your heart and to, uh, on this next video, to look and see where you can give online to Middleburg Baptist Church, and or, like I've said every week, if you feel it in your heart to give to a local ministry wherever you are, uh, located or a local uh, to donate to a local nonprofit in your area. Man, that's what we are called to do. As compassionate people, as Christians or non Christians, we are called to love each other. And so, Happy New Year, everybody. Thank you for being such a great part of Middleburg Baptist Church Online. Uh, strange stuff for a, a local church, but we are going to keep it up until uh, this is all over and, and maybe even beyond that. So, thank you. God bless you all and go out and be the church in your community show love to each other happy new year
the next few moments, quiet your mind and listen carefully with your whole heart. Take a deep breath in. Hold it. Now breathe out. Jesus says in Matthew chapter 11, Come to me, all who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Deep breath in. Hold it. Now breathe it out. Jesus didn't say you might find rest, or that somehow you'll find rest as you wander aimlessly through this life. He said, come to me, and I will give you rest. I will give you rest. It's a promise. He goes on to tell us that he is gentle, and that in him our very souls will find rest. Breathe in. Hold. Breathe out. You can take Jesus at his word. You can choose to take all your cares and worries, anxiety and pain, habits and hurts, and give them to Jesus. Are you restless? Are you weary and worn out? If given the opportunity, could today be that day of rest? As you breathe in and breathe out, remember that Jesus is patiently waiting for you to come to him, bringing everything that's weighing you down. Jesus is waiting to give you rest. Well, good morning and welcome to the very last Sunday of 2020. And you know what? This beach ball, this beach ball is a representative of 2020 and there we go. Who's, who's with me? It is time to get rid of 2020. Oh my goodness. Uh, this has been a, uh, a very tough year and it has left us feeling more alienated and alone when we have lost people in our lives, family members, and they don't want to have a relationship with us based on how we voted in the last election. 2020 has created emotional pain in relationships, and there has been deep loss there. The news reports are saying that this year, 2020, we have lost uh, the most amount of Americans due to the pandemic than any other time in our nation's history. There's been a loss of emotional health. The suicide rate has gone up, but not just that aspect of the emotional health. Emotional health has been such a loss in 2020 for our frontline workers, those doctors, the scientists, the, the nurses, uh, uh, those in, working there inside these hospitals and the amount of pain and trauma that they have seen and witnessed has really taken a toll on them. And our hearts and our prayers are continuing to, um, uh, to surround them and bathe them for their own protection. We have lost this year in 2020 any aspect of normalcy in our work lives. I, I think of, of our Loudoun County teachers and those who are working there in the administrative offices like, like Tina, I think of Kim, I think of Lee, uh, I think of Mandy and others, and everyone's had to adapt to try to teach a class of 25 to 30 kids over a computer that that is difficult and there is nothing normal about that and uh, then again I, as i talked about on christmas eve you've got drive by uh visitations from people because we can't be in proximity we have lost that proximity even when we come we've opened up our doors here on sunday mornings but but we, we can't sit by each other. We've got to be at least six feet apart. And, and we, when we sing, we wear a mask. 
When we go to the grocery store, we're supposed to, you know, to wash down the carts and, and stay six feet away from each other and wear those masks. There's nothing normal about that. Most of us uh, did not have a Thanksgiving and a Christmas with our entire family based on the, the COVID pandemic. Nothing feels normal anymore. And all this has created a, a heavy heart because the calendar is going to change. And this is the title of my message this morning. When, um, when your calendar changes, but your circumstances don't. And even those who are getting the vaccine right now, they are required to still continue to wear the mask because they can still transmit the COVID-19. We have stress. We have heavy burdens. There are emotional and financial issues that all of us are uh, addressing and dealing with in 20, 2020. And so now that the calendar is going to change, we also have this opportunity to take all these heavy burdens and identify what do we do with them. Well, this morning, I want to take the words of Jesus from Matthew chapter 11, verses 28 through 30. And I believe it'll be an encouragement for each of us as we kind of process and work through just a couple little verses to tie up this final Sunday of 2020. Jesus himself said, Matthew 11, verses 28, he said, Come to me. All you who are weary, and I will give you rest. The first thing I just want to ask each of us is, where are we supposed to go? And Jesus said, come to me. I will give you rest. Who will give you rest? Jesus says, I will give you rest rest. Where are you turning for your answers? Where are you going to ease the burden and the stress and the difficulty from 2020? Or maybe I should ask, who are you going to? You see, Jesus offers this amazing little promise, and that is this, that in Jesus, in Christ, we can experience rest. We can find the answers in Jesus. So who are you going to? Where are you trusting in 2020 to give you the peace and the rest that you need? And this is one of those things where briefly I just want to remind you to be self-aware, to self-examine, and, and just kind of take some personal inventory, that opportunity for each of us to really look in the mirror when you're feeling burdened. And the bottom line question is, am I going to you, Jesus? Am I giving you my burdens? Am I taking the pain of my life, and am I giving it to you and laying it at the foot of the cross? Well, he says, come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. In the Greek, you could actually kind of take the weary and burdened and just write the word exhausted, exhaustion <clears throat> right in there. And what I'd like for you to do is just ask, answer the following question. What am I weary of? What am I burdened of? And, and make a list uh, to answer that. What is creating and stealing the most amount of peace in my life? What am I weary and burdened over? Now, in the context, Jesus is referring as he's talking to um, his audience uh, at this particular moment. He's talking about the heavy burden of a religious system that was stealing their peace and joy in life. And it was a religious system that was... Uh, prioritizing and emphasizing their own righteous behavior, their own actions, their own behavior, deeds, uh, so that they could get right enough to get into heaven. 
and therefore it created a lot of legalism and they were processing and dealing with that. But in the same way, I know that there are many of us who are living life in such a way that we are trying to do it on our own, in our own effort, in our own strength, on our own plan, our own purposes, and we are ending up doing it in our own strength alone. And that's not the plan. That's not the design. Because Jesus said, if you are weary and burdened, which is where all of that is going to lead you to, if you are experiencing weariness and burden and exhaustion, then one of the very first things you should do is write down what specifically, unpack that, what specifically is creating this burden and weariness in my life, and then just sit back and relax as you evaluate that I am now going to turn to Jesus and give him this list of burdens. They're they're yours, Jesus. I am giving them to you because you said, Jesus, come to me and I will give you rest. And so, Jesus, I'm giving my burdens and my weary heart, mind, and soul, I'm giving them to you. Here's my list. Take them, burn them, get rid of them. And then he says, I'll give you rest there in verse 28, but also at the end of verse 29, he says, and I uh, take my yoke on you and learn from me. I'm gentle and humble at heart. You will find, here we go, rest for your souls. So you will find rest and you will find rest for your souls. You know, on Christmas Eve, we heard uh, Pastor Doug sing uh, an amazing song, O Holy Night. It is one of my favorite Christmas hymns. O Holy Night, the stars are brightly shining. It is the night of our dear Savior's birth. Long lay the world in sin and error pining. And look at what it says here. Till... Jesus appears and the soul felt its worth. You see, in Matthew eleven twenty nine, 29, Jesus says that you will find rest for your souls. And if at no other time in the United States this year, Americans need to experience rest for their souls. The song lyrics, O Holy Night, continue, A thrill of hope, the weary world rejoices. Matthew eleven twenty-eight 28 says, Jesus said, I will give you rest. I will give you rest. And there is a thrill because the weary world rejoices. We can have joy. We can rejoice because of Jesus. We can experience His rest when we come to Him and offer Him and give Him our weary burdens. So we're going to make that list, and then we are going to understand what He offers. He offers us rest and rest for our souls. But finally, there's two things that we are responsible for, and here they are. The first one is Jesus says, you got to take my yoke. You got to take my yoke. Now, here's an image of a yoke. It is a steering device. It's a wooden cross piece fastened over the necks of two animals and attached to a plow or a cart. A yoke, it's going to allow two animals to share the load and pull together. Oftentimes we'll read in the Bible that they were used primarily with bulls or oxen to plow fields and pull wagons. Now, Now here's the key. The animals yoked together needed to be the same size and weight for the cart to plow evenly. 
you can just imagine those in Jesus' audience who were listening to him, and they would have understood that when Jesus referred to an, a yoke, it, it would have made absolute sense. Because he says, take my yoke and learn from me. I'm gentle and humble, and you will find rest. My yoke is easy, and my burden is light, he said in verse 30. So there's something about Jesus' yoke for a heavy, burdened, exhausted heart that Jesus wants them to, to, to learn and to know about. And that would resonate with them because they see yokes on oxen and bull all the time. And so an easy yoke would have been a, uh, that, that would have really been an encouragement to everyone who would hear this. And essentially what Jesus is saying is, an easy yoke is, a, is my way of life. It's like the Jesus way of life is going to have a, an easy yoke. And so here's my question for you this morning. If you are feeling burdens, if your heart is heavy laden, could you be carrying the wrong load? Could you be carrying a load designed for someone else? Could you be carrying a load that is so burdensome and heavy that you actually need the Son of God to be right next to you, yoked together to carry the burden together? Could the yoke, could the load that you are carrying right now be intended for Jesus? Interestingly enough, this is also why we have someone pulling with us in the same direction, same size, uh, same kind of strength. Uh, I, would, I would ask that there's a reference when uh, St. Paul says, do not be unequally yoked with another. And so look at this image here. Have you ever felt like you are pulling the weight of the load with a jackass? I think many of us all throughout 2020 have felt the burdens that we have been carrying because there is a donkey right next to us and we are having a very difficult time moving in the same direction. Jesus says, take my yoke. When you are yoked with my plans and my purpose for your life, Jesus would say, you are experiencing more rest than you will ever experience burden. So that's the first responsibility, my friends, you and I have as we evaluate and 2020 and prepare for, to head into 2021. The first responsibility that you have is to take Jesus' yoke. The second thing is to learn from me. Jesus said in verse 29, take my yoke upon you and learn from me. That word learn is mathetes, which is where we get the word disciple, and it means to be a learner or a follower. And so my first question for you is, are you still teachable? Are you teachable? Are there times that God is trying to teach you something and you have an open ear to the Spirit of God? Are you still a student of Jesus? Are you still a learner? Or have you arrived? Or do you feel like you have learned that lesson so well that you don't need to be taught that lesson anymore? You know, a lot of times we are kind of getting tired of classroom work with Jesus, and so we want to get back out on the field and Jesus says, no, actually, you need to stay in the classroom for a little bit longer so that you'll be more effective out in the field. 
but field work is necessary. In fact, one can't actually be a complete learner with data only, info only, book learning only. It's more than just data in, but it's actually loving with our hearts and our hands and our minds and the things we say, the things we look at, the things that we do. Uh, That's what makes a godly person, by the way. Somebody is godly by the way they act and by the way they love. I see a personal example of this. We have a a young lady who just graduated from college uh, in uh, been attending our church, and uh, her name is Morgan. Many of you know her, and what's so inspiring is her social media feed. And her social media feed is just laid laden with um, images of her scriptures and of the. Um, of the notes that she takes and the personal application where she is bringing the data of God's Word into her mind, into her heart, and she's allowing it to uh, transform her life. And it's such an inspiration and wonderful to see. As the calendar changes this year, and your circumstances don't. It's your responsibility to take Jesus' yoke and learn from Him. But here's the good news. Your heart and your soul will find rest. So how do we gather? How do we learn? And how do we continue to be a disciple? Well, uh, one of the things to get the data into our lives is to... uh, participate in daily devotions. So one of the things coming up for 2021 is my encouragement to read through the Bible and use the YouVersion Bible app. That means to read this Bible each and every day. To join one of our Zoom small groups so that you can be doing community together. Will you set aside time to pray each and every day? Now, the very first series we're going to be doing in January is going to be about prayer. And I'm going to be encouraging you to pray for your family, to pray for your church, to pray for your pastors, to pray for your community each and every day. Will you commit to attending church each and every Sunday? And if you can't commit to being here in person, that you would make sure that you Um, are allowing the teaching that comes from the church to infiltrate your heart in your life? And then will you find a spot to serve God? Will you be the hands and feet of Jesus to those that he is putting you next to and participate with on the team? Jesus said, come to me for rest. Jesus truly is the reason that a weary world rejoices. Let's come to Jesus and lay our weary hearts, our weary souls and burdens down and find divine rest that only He can give. My goodness, after 2020, we need our burdens lifted. Would you pray with me? Jesus, I pray for each and every individual who's listening and can hear my voice at this time. I pray for their hearts, that you would soften their heart. I pray that they would receive you as their Lord and Savior. I pray that they would come to you for rest. And I pray that they would be learners of you, that that they would grow in their walk with you, and that they would take your yoke and it's a steering device. Jesus, you want to take uh, the wheel of our lives, and I pray that we would give you the steering wheel of our lives and follow wherever you lead us so that we can make an impact for you. We give you our hearts, our lives, our souls. We submit and surrender to you Whatever your plan and goals are for 2021, we commit them to you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
As usual, thank you so much for joining us at Middleburg Baptist Church Online. We wish you a happy new year. Into the new year, keep your faith, keep your chin up, keep your excitement. Life goes on and we need to make a difference in people's lives. Thank you so much for all you mean to us and we look forward to seeing you next week online at 9 a.m. Eastern Standard Time for Church Online at Middleburg Baptist Church. Go be the church, everybody. Happy New Year! <laughs>